stream. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. On one screen it says that, but on the other screen it hasn't joined yet. But I think we are live. And you watch, the first person to join will be Relly. <laughs> she is always the first person to join in. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to day three boob camp. You will see it is a blonde night tonight. You are joined <laughs> by three beautiful blondes. And um, we're talking everything gut. We are talking bowel. We're talking poo. We're talking SIBO. We're talking colonics. Any questions that you have on bowel health is what we're going to um, discuss tonight. Oh, Belinda, you're first in the gate, honey. You beat Relly. And Jules is in too. Great. All right. So, ladies, I know that we are live and we are ready to go. So um, I'm going to introduce Carly first. So Carly's the one with the long blonde hair in, in the, well, she's in the middle of my screen. <laughs> Carly and I have been friends. We're both naturopaths. We've been on this journey together for about four years, I think, Carly. And um, so she's over in West, where are you? Melbourne. Victoria, oh, Northeast Victoria. 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 Yeah. Yes, and you just came to the Gold Coast last week and had some sunshine with us. Uh, Carly has grown her clinic super amazingly. Like she has got... Um, you know, all different facets in her clinic, but I want to bring her on here because she loves being the poo queen. <laughs> so Carly, can you let us know a little bit about you and um, how, why you've come into the bowel health scene and just, yeah, a little bit about gut health and um, yeah, say hello. Cool. Hi, everybody. Um, I have a clinic in Northeast Victoria called Kismet Health, and I've got a wonderful team of other naturopaths. Um, and I've recently also become a mama. He actually turns one on Sunday, which I can't believe. Um, since coming back from maternity leave, I have really focused in on my massive passion for gut health. It's always been there and it's something that I've really wanted to hone in on. Um, but I just kind of went, yep, now's the right time. So yeah, it's, that's all I'm seeing, um, in clinic now is people with gut health issues and just absolutely loving that. Um, I run a program specific for people with complex, um, gut health issues, the harder, the better, the juicier, <laughs> I love a bit of a challenge. Um, and yeah, um, Gut health is huge. I think it just, there's so many different aspects to gut health. And I think a lot of people get quite confused um, and don't fully understand what's going on because there can be so many triggers, so many underlying causes, and it can be really quite debilitating for people as well. So yeah, I think that's um, a big aspect as to why I love it so much. And what you teach is something that um, we don't hear about from doctors. You know, we don't hear a lot about autoimmune. We don't hear, you know, you know, so we can get to the underlying, you know, reasons that you are, have got the pain. Uh, you are running to the toilet a lot or you can't go to the toilet. Like you know, things that, that people don't like to talk about a lot. And I think we also provide different and complementary ways of treatment as well that um, not necessarily are always there medically, which, you know, and I always work in with the medical system and believe that, you know, a really holistic combined approach is what's going to get clients really great outcomes. But there's definitely things that we have um, as naturopaths to really advance people from a gut health point of view. And sometimes you know, medically, they, they don't know how to treat or there isn't always the answer, especially with something like SIBO or um, even autoimmune disease, like thyroid autoimmune disease, which involves a lot the gut a lot of the time. You know, they kind of go, oh, we're not really quite sure how to treat it or where to go from here. And people are kind of left without an answer or, you know, a path forward. Yeah, and they just tend to, um, you know, to live with it. So, yeah. All right, so thank you. And we're going to be, you know, the whole program of this tonight, ladies, is we've spoken about lymphatic health. I've given you some 
really good ed education on that for day one. Day two, we did all of the movements. We all started moving. And then now day three, remember I tell you that we can't get great results and we can't even start our lymphatic detoxification unless our bowels are, are moving. And um, Michelle, you know all about all about this. So Michelle has um, been in the holistic health world for over 30 years, only a little bit more than me. <laughs> um, and, and you specialize in like, I loved meeting you and I love the, the calmness um, and the approach that you bring to being a colon hydrotherapist, but you teach people how to become colon hydrotherapists. And you actually drove from Sydney to do my training, um, my lymphatic alive training. So then you can incorporate that into your teachings. Um, so thank you so much. And I've loved, loved connecting with you. And yeah, you know, putting, you put me on the table and, you know, talked me through my colonic and just, yeah, just love the, your depth of knowledge too. And you just take away the scariness that can be surrounded with the word, you know, colon hydrotherapy. Um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself too. Thank you, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. So I'm Michelle King, and I actually reside in northern New South Wales um, between Coffs Harbour and Grafton, where my husband and I and our two children, we have our business that's called Gumtree Retreat, and we specialise in detox and cleansing. But we also have two clinics in Sydney known as Full Circle Health, one on the northern beaches and one in the Sutherland Shire. Um, so we have a lovely team of people um, that um, work in those businesses. Um, and, and we also, as Chelsea said, we um, teach colon hydrotherapy. So I have... How did I come to be a colon hydrotherapist? Well, I sat actually at a Tony Robbins event in 2001. And my belief around colon hydrotherapy was like, oh my God, why would you want to do that? That is just so gross. But I sat there and, you know, you go to health seminars and you never know what you're going to sometimes be your gift or you take from that. But for me, it was this colon hydrotherapist that spoke. And she inspired me and I sat there and as Chelsea said, I, I've been in the natural therapies field for a long time as an aromatherapist and reflexologist. And I originally trained as a beauty therapy in beauty therapy. And I sat there and thought, wow, this is the missing piece to my integration and treatments and puzzle that, you know, we deliver to people. I've got to do that. I have to go and train as a colon hydrotherapist. It just made sense that it was a health maintenance treatment for the inside. Mm -hmm. And so that's how my journey as a colon hydrotherapist started. So it took me then um, two years. I set that goal and then took myself off to the States to get certified and at the time, there was no one in Australia teaching colon hydrotherapy. And so um, because I'd been in the wellness industry for a long time, I could then take the stages and take the certifications, um, several trips back to America to become an instructor through the International Association for Colon Hydrotherapy. So I could allow and share this amazing industry here in Australia. So... Um, yeah, that's another aspect of um, our business. Andrew and I, my partner, he's a certified colon hydrotherapist, so he takes, uh, takes care and supports the other half of our population, um, the males in there. But um, we've teamed together and we've had an amazing um, 17, 18 years on this colon hydrotherapy journey. Um, 16 years ago, um, we were offered the opportunity to um, work at the Tony Robbins Life Mastery events. So what was involved there was we were able, we were sent to his events to manage his wellness centre because Tony, part of his life mastery was to take people through a cleanse. Yeah. And Tony's been a great advocate for lymphasizing, yes. um, um, activating lymphatics. That's part of the life mastery. 
but he's also been a great advocate for how important it is to cleanse that stuff out of your body as soon as and as effectively as you can. And the great thing is that colon hydrotherapy is one of the most efficient ways and effective ways to remove that accumulated waste out of your system. Mm. Um, so it's really like the other half of the cleanse. So when people are doing a detox, it's really vital that you integrate some form of bowel flushing um, to keep the system activated. Um, to remove that accumulated waste out. So we were chatting before, Chelsea, um, about people that start doing your program and some you've had some feedback of where people sort of start to get to, or they'll have great health responses. So we look at those, you know, not feeling great or breaking out in a rash or, you know, getting a runny nose, um, starting to cough and just all those detoxification symptoms that can come about which we celebrate mm -hmm. but it's just a way of their body trying to remove it um, but an efficient way is if they did some form of bowel cleansing to support with that removal they get through those symptoms pain more painless um painlessly yeah if you like so um, because um, we like getting results and that's what we need tonight is to give you a little bit of education why, what can cause constipation and then how to get the, you know, the results faster. So, um, so Carly, did you want to chat about the causes? What can cause um, constipation? Sure. There is so many causes of there is even like different types of constipation like we could do like a full hour talk yeah. on this topic like it is really juicy and really extensive but probably some of the main driving factors for constipation that I see would be poor diet that being you know simple things like just not drinking enough water like and I know they're like oh my god she's already banging on about water but it is and it's so important for the lymphatic system I'm sure Chelsea bangs on about it all the time as well um, but then also looking at fiber and the balance and the types of fiber you know too much fiber not enough fiber fiber that's fueling our microbiome as a prebiotic as well is going to be really really important um, and you're seeing that imbalance really, really often. Um, then you also have things like chronic infections. And I know Chelsea and I were chatting before here, and I think that there's quite a few people um, in your, um, your boob camp and things like that that have had infections and parasites and overgrowth and dysbiosis. And, you know, these are one of the main um, causes. And what actually happens there is it specifically starts to target and uh, affect what's called the migrating motor complex in our bowel. Um, uh, and that starts to slow down. That stops the flushing mechanism and the cleansing and the clearing that's happening in the bowel. And then you get this buildup of, you know, the feces and the microbiome and the beneficial bacteria and the not so great um, bacteria as well. So you just get this, you know, overgrowth happening um, and infections are, you know, they've even kind of questioned whether there's an autoimmune response happening within the bowel here from, you know, the onset of a simple infection, you know, and that can be parasites, bacteria, lots of different types of organisms in the bowel, um, even worms, you know, like so many different things can <laughs> and unfortunately invade our personal space. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and cause yeah lots of different issues there so um, they're probably just a couple of the main things that I'm seeing in clinic yeah did you want to add anything to that Michelle yeah so as you said water um, um, with that so that's like by integrating some form of bowel flushing with the water um, a colon a colonic is very hydrating so that is one of the things we can claim as colon hydrotherapists we can't make claims but we can claim that a colon hydrotherapy session is going or an enema is going to be hydrating for your body so it's actually going to get in there hydrate activate that accumulated waste and support you by just removing it with natural peristalsis so it's going to be a more comfortable bowel movement and and over time it's just going to support that but as you said diet's the biggest thing and it's keeping it simple um, is more sustainable so you know look at your water 
look at your foods and, um, you know, as you said, um, Chelsea, you have a great way if people are becoming challenged is that the hair testing is a great way to look at your foods. Let's yeah. stop guessing. Let's just look at what you specifically need for your body and then you, you know, you get that little map, that roadmap of these are the foods um, that I need to just avoid to support me to heal. Yes. And to get back on track. And so instead of guessing, a faster way, again, another great tool for your toolbox is to, you know, invest in getting your hair done. That way, you know, I can avoid these foods and that's going to heal me faster. So it's all going to intermingle together. One question that Susie has asked says, what if you have diverticulitis or bowel sensitivities? My last colonic I had, I was in a lot of pain and it's been, it scared her off. Yeah. So that's a really great question, Susie. Um, really any certified colon hydrotherapist should go into an in-depth um, consultation and look at all those, there's certain contraindications that, um, that we should avoid from having a colonic if it's active. So, um, I guess I'd need to know how if you did what if you've only done one because it may not have been also just that if the diverticulitis is not active it's okay to do a procedure um, and sometimes just on your first second treatment you can get a little bit of cramping and discomfort so it's having that therapist's knowledge to be able to support you through that. Um, so yeah, we, I can chat, you know, later to you, um, Susie about that and maybe just put your mind at rest to what it was, because it may be that it could be something, just the coaching that you were holding onto the water for too long, that was causing you to cramp a little more than necessary. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you want to chat, please feel free to reach out to me. Cool. Yep. So she has only had one in a clinic. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Carly, how many times a day should we be pooing and how long should, from when we eat, should, the, should we, you know, pass? Should we, we're just going to say poo, should we poo? Ideally, you want to go at least once a day. And like, and most people will kind of range from once to twice. And when you go, you want it to be really easy to pass. You want to feel like it's complete, like that you're not like, oh, do I need to go back again? Um, and obviously no, no chronic pain or anything like that. Um, in terms of uh, the, the timing between, and there's actually a really cool little test that you can do at home to test this. Um, you know, they say within 24 hours, you want to have, um, you know, that food that's entered um, the digestive system coming out the other end. A simple way you can do this is grab a couple of tablespoons of sesame seeds in a nice glass of water or corn, is, <laughs> you know, because that's going to come out the other end um, undigested um, as well. And so, then you can time it so look at the time that you've drank that glass of water with um the sesame seeds or when you're eating the corn on the cob and see you know when when are they coming out present and detectable in the stool as well and that'll give you a little bit of an idea as to how fast your transit time is so people like you should check out your poo you should yeah. have a look um, and it, like, you should have a diagram on the back of your toilet <laughs> door the Bristol stool chart, <laughs> like every single, I was actually speaking to a client this morning who the um, four-year-old son's got some constipation at the moment. And I said, print off, even for this four-year-old, I was like, get, educate him and tell him what a normal bout, you know, it should be something that we are educated about from such a young age. It should be part of in primary school. Um, I'm really passionate about this because it's like, this is how we can, you know, make really big changes and we can start to actually understand what is normal. Um, because so many people go, I'm not constipated. And I'm like, yes, you are. What are the other signs? So what are the other signs like skin signs? Like what are the other signs of constipation? Uh, definitely skin, that congestion, um, inability to lose weight, like where you just, you feel like you've done everything, but if you're not moving, you know, and passing a stool every day, then you're definitely going to struggle in terms of weight. I would also say mood disorders, um, you know, that anxiety, depression, we know that the gut brain connection, not just from a nervous system point of view, but we also now know there's amazing research in terms of different microbes and the things that are living in your 
gut. Um, serotonin, our feel-good hormone, lives in our gut as well. But if you're just not moving, uh, you know, your bowel every single day, the effect that that has on all of the other organs and how sluggish things can be become, then you're going to feel foggy and then that affects our mental health as well. So, yeah. And your skin will take, your skin will become grey and lifeless. Um, yeah, you may have rashes. Yeah, and that's sluggishness, just headachey. Yeah. Your like headaches is a great other one. Yeah, migraines, headaches. Definitely. Classic, classic mm -hmm. results. Um, we'll have people come in with a headache, they'll do a colonic and they'll leave without a headache. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Mm. It affects everything because, like, you know how good you feel after you go to the toilet and do a big poo. Like, you feel – how much better do you feel instantly? Yep. Just well, going, oh, you know, great. Yep. And when people tell me they haven't pooed for three or four days, like, oh, man. Like, yep. oh, Chelsea, can I add as well? It should be kind of like a sausage. Like, yes. you don't want it to be really clumpy or like pebbly or broken, like a nice smooth long sausage. Float <laughs> or sink or what does that it, mean? It's going, it depends. That comes a lot down to fiber actually um, and also fats in the diet. So, you know, really uh, you will also see fat on in the water if you're having too much fat in the diet. Um, but, yeah, it all comes down to fiber content and fat as to whether it's going to be, you know, floating. or. I would say most stools would sink. You don't yep. really want it to be floating. And as we're doing, um, so with clients who are doing more of a heavy metal detox, things like that, they, you do find that their stools, their poos do sink um, lower, like on the bottom, you know, as well. And if they have got more fat, you know, coming out, then it gets floatier mm. um, too. But yeah, so definitely drinking more water, getting the fibre in, um, massaging, the tummy, you know, helping from the outside. I know as we want to move our body um, on, you know, and exercise and things, but definitely massaging tummies, especially with kids. So many mums are finding that they, if they use the, the gloves on the, on the tummies, you know, massaging around with the kids, they are, you know, going a lot more, but watching, definitely watching what you're putting, you know, in your mouth. But if you have, um, if you have to have assistance to, to go to the toilet. So some things people use is cascara um, as, you know, so there are different things that you can use as a tablet as well. And some will stimulate, like will just cause a bum explosion. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people will take a metamucil or, you know, mm. so talk us through Carly, some things that people take that how we, you know, that, that might not be great for them. My biggest concern with, with using those things is that it can do like a complete flush of everything. And it's kind of like um, when they're doing this regularly, um, they, they then uh, keep thinking that they're constipated because it can take up to 24 hours to 48 hours for that stool to then kind of reappear, ready to be evacuated from the bowel. Um, and so they go, like they'll, they'll, they'll flush it out completely and then... Um, they, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours pass, but they still haven't gone again. They think they're constipated. So then they're taking the tablets again. Um, or some people really uh, respond negatively. And as you were saying there, they get the poo explosions um, happening uh, because they're just, you know, stimulating that bowel way too much as well. Um, and it's kind of like a, I definitely don't recommend it, you know, long-term use. Um, and when it comes to Metamucil, it can flip people the complete other way. You know, I've seen um, it actually make constipation um, worse. And there's so many other uh, better uh, fibres that we could be doing that are actually feeding um, the, the, there's a difference. You've got your probiotics and you've got your prebiotics. Um, and so the probiotics are the beneficial commensals. And then you've got your prebiotics, which are actually like the food and the fuel sources to, to feed this bacteria. And so we can be selecting different fibers um, and they can come from your diet, you know, foods like um, onions and garlics and leeks and things like that, which so many people reacting to and removing from their diet, but they're so wonderful, you know, and they, they serve that purpose of growing that microbiome and providing fiber to not only bulk up that stool but it you know help navigate the bowel and the, the immune system and the inflammation that's in the bowel like it's just there's so many more wonderful choices I think than so things like slippery elm psyllium husks 
um, yeah. partially hydrolyzed guar gum, well, you know, yeah. floss and goss and lactulose, like they're all yeah. going to be really beneficial um, prebiotics that you can, you know, use. And it, you, what, what, when I'm doing um, microbiome testing with clients, um, you can kind of specifically see what's going on for that individual um, and the different strains of bacteria that we might want to enhance specifically. So you can use different fibers for different people. Um, and there's definitely cases where I wouldn't use certain things for certain people because we're all individuals. So this is very generalized, you know, yes. advice here. Um, so please don't go and play around, especially if you've got severe symptoms and things like that. Um, but yeah, there's so many wonderful things. Magnesium. Yeah. Um, yeah, the girls online are asking um, about magnesium. You definitely okay. want to have the right type of magnesium. There's some really um, quite harsh magnesiums um, and that can also cause a lot of diarrhea. But it's definitely, um, you know, for a lot of people, especially if you're deficient, um, it, that'll, you know, one of the signs of constipation can be actually um, magnesium deficiency as well. So that can be effective for some people for sure. Yeah. So moving... Um having a die off so if we're if we're treating candida we're using the vitaclans um you know it, it, we we need to have the bowels we use some uh, sea minerals as well is part of the the plan so that the minerals really help flush through mm -hmm. but um seeing a die off some so some people will bloat up and like and not poo and then other people will just go you know will cause a bum explosion. So like you said, it's different mm. to in in every case. And it yeah. might might be different to like what's dip, what parasite is is in there. Yeah. Um, you know, that we're treating as well. And like Michelle, would you when when you're having a colonic, like you can see, so if for people who haven't had a colonic um, before, so my experience is the one um, that I had, it's called the open system. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, in our in our profession, um, there's two styles of colon hydrotherapy methods. So there's the closed system, which is where the therapist sits with you the whole time and has to operate the water and um, going into your um, colon under a slight pressure. Um, and so that's the older traditional method. So, um, and then there's the open system. So I originally trained with the closed system and then I discovered the open system through um, the Tony Robbins events and went down that path and the great thing about the open system is you're in control of the water so where the clothes someone is taking that water into your colon and looking at it through a little pressure dial um, and the tube is is different as well um, so with it being closed the tube is is bigger um, and it goes to the machine where with the open system the tube is only the diameter of like my finger and we coach you how to self insert that tube into your anal opening so it's not as invasive personally it only sits about an inch and a half inside your um, anal opening and it stays there through the duration of the treatment. And then you take the gravity fed, temperature regulated, purified water up into your colon. So um, it's gravity fed, it's nice and gentle. You take it in and then you just get a sensation that you just need to go to the toilet. So you gently push the water away as if you were sitting on the toilet to have a bowel movement. The water comes out around the tube, goes down a hole in the base that you're sitting on. So it's like riding a big Harley. It's like a um, fiberglass base that you're relaxed on um, and your bottom is um, sealed off in a wet, at a well um, that you eliminate down into. So there's no mess, no smell. The base also has an extractor fan fitted. So it's a really clean um, procedure. And then the waste goes down this hole straight out through a view tube that we call the U-tube. So you can see what's leaving your body. Um, and that's fascinating. That's amazing in itself just to see what is coming out of you. Um, and um, yeah, and then you just repeat that process. So you just take the water in, push the water away. So the great... Um, I guess quality I love about the open system is sometimes people need to retrain going to the toilet. 
So they may have had a challenge in their childhood um, and they've taken this challenge about bowel habits right through into their adult life and have these challenges about going to the toilet. Um, so the great thing about I love about the open system is you can help people retrain their bowel. So with taking the water in and having to push then that bowel movement away, that allows them to reconnect with being able to, you know, go to the toilet. That's something that um, I, think that's so interesting. I never really thought to, to use that because it is, it really, you know, that um, there's almost that, that um, anxiety in some people with going to the bathroom and over so many years, depending on their job and, you know, different circumstances. It's something that I see in clinic all the time. So that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Well, I had an amazing, um, we had an amazing experience happen at one of the um, Tony Robbins events where we had a lady and she traveled halfway across the world to Fiji to come to this event, um, had never had a colonic before. And at, at registration, when we're sharing about colon hydrotherapy to the participants and she said, oh, I don't need to do that. I've been vegan for 20 years. I'm really clean. Um, and it was like, well, it's not about that. It's actually you're going to do a cleanse <laughs> to support you for supporting you through the cleanse. So she decided that she'd try it. And um, she didn't have a great connection with going to the toilet, we found out. And so what happened during the session she thought going to the toilet was just, it was just so disgusting. This whole thing was terrible. So during the session, <coughs> she's um, really a bit struggling with it. And we were chatting and coaching her. And I went in and, you know, said, you know, you just, I walked in and she was probably mid releasing some water. And it was like, she was making hard work of it. And I said, why are you making hard work of that? Just relax. You don't need to make hard work of it. And and said, just relax and breathe and just, you know, gently push the water away because she looked like she was really quite strainy. And so I left her with that, walked back out, about five minutes later, went back into the treatment, came in and she was just crying, sobbing. And what had happened, that had reconnected her with an incident that happened when she was like a baby. She was, she could vividly remember going to the toilet in her nappy, deciding to take the nappy off, smearing it everywhere, all over the cot and the walls. And of course her mother just like scolded her for doing that. And she'd taken that right through 28 mm. years of her life mm. and had that connection that going to the toilet was just disgusting. Mm. And by just having that moment with her, she had this flashback and up until then, she wasn't releasing much in her treatment. But after reconnecting with that memory, she had the most incredible amount of stuff come out in her colonic. She couldn't believe it. That, that brain connection. That whole brain connection of that memory. Yeah. And it was incredible because that woman, it changed her life. She came out and by the way, she was the most unhealthy looking vegan. She had the pastiest, sallowest, unhealthy looking skin. Came out of that colonic with rosy cheeks, clarity, just glowing and just said, oh, I just feel so good about my bottom. You know, it was incredible. I released in so many ways, right? Absolutely. And so when you were saying about kids before, I always say it's such a shame at, after the age of two, we stop celebrating going to the loo. And it's literally we need to celebrate going to the toilet and not be embarrassed about it because people are literally dying from embarrassment. Yeah, by not being yeah, it's so so taboo, and I, you know, it's obviously something that I see in practice all the time. And as soon as I start asking them, even adults, like they just start, you can just see that, like, oh, she's about to ask me about my poo, and like, you know, the walls come up. Um, you know, I've got some great tactics now to make people feel comfortable and, and to to bring them down. But it, you know, it, it yeah, got to break it down. Yeah. No more being shy. Talk about yeah. your poo. <laughs> It's normalized it. <laughs> yes. And like talking about like the poo thing, I find easy. But yesterday I was on the phone with a client and with Tia Brennan, and Tia starts talking about um now about juicy vaginas. 
And I'm like, I've never heard the word juicy and vagina in the same sentence. And so, so we'll get Tia in here next, you know, talking about juicy vaginas. But just to be able to talk about anything mm -hmm. and, you know, that relates. So look what I've got. A, looky here. Uh, I should have had my hat on. <laughs> so, um, Carly, behind you, you've got your She's poo got pillow. pillow. She's got her poo pillow. Oh. I, I found this in the shop this morning, this little poo. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I'm prepared to take a bite of it. But, uh -oh. yeah, go, go the poo. All right. Um, a couple of little questions. Cool. That we've got is um, I have very low boot trait and low zolian zo zo butyrate and zonulin okay that that word yep according to my microbiome mapping test i've had two tests and no parasites came up though some therapists say we all have parasites so i'm confused with my results maybe they're hiding too well so i don't know if there's a question um um, with the low butyrate, that's just indicating, um, so you've got short chain fatty acids. So you've got butyrate, acetate and propanate, um, and they are byproducts from short chain fatty acid production. So basically it's an indication that there's not enough good fiber and prebiotic fibers, um, in your diet. Um, so that's why the butyrate would be low. Yay. Um, Yay. <laughs> yeah. I can answer that one. <laughs> awesome. If that was a question. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, yes, toilet anxiety is a real thing. Question for Michelle. I have had colonics in Melbourne, but it cost is $110. Is that expensive or is that the average cost? I think that's what I pay. Um, also, does a clonic flush out good bacteria? So if having them regularly, does that reduce healthy bacteria? Lastly, is having a clonic weekly good for general health? So let's address the pricing first. So that 110, that's an average price for a professional colon hydrotherapy session. Um, um, like many clinics may do even packages for people that are using it for health maintenance and having them regularly um, to support their health. Um, we do, like obviously we would do packages um, to, um, yeah, reduce the price for them. Um, so it's just individual. You've got a machine that is worth like so much money. $40,000. $40,000, yeah. The cleaning and the time and the room, that everything that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's a really, you know, reasonable. So, yeah, talk to, um, you know, about doing a package. So the next question is, um, are we flushing out good bacteria? That's a great question. And that's one we get all the time. Um, and look, your bowel movement is bacteria, our bowel, natural bowel movement. So it's a bit of a myth. It's not going to flush out all the bacteria. And we um, say to people, it's a bit like that whole weed, seed and feed protocol. So obviously, if you're doing colon hydrotherapy sessions, um, you're going to feed and seed from the top as well. So, you know, good probiotics, good prebiotics, um, great fiber. So, um, no, it's not going to flush your bacteria because when you have a bowel movement, you're taking bacteria out of your colon. Mm -hmm. And how often? And yes. is it just good for general health? Yeah, for general health, we usually say after people have initially done a colon hydrotherapy um, series, so if people come to um, do colon hydrotherapy for the first time, we'd normally suggest that they, they do a few sessions. So it may be, say, four to six sessions initially, like you have six foot of your colon, you can't cleanse it all in one treatment. So we would do that over, um, like, um, four to six weeks, again, it's very individual. So your colon hydrotherapist will um, obviously have a consultation with you, look at what your health goals are, what do you want to achieve from doing this? And then we would personally design a um, treatment regime for that person. So it becomes very individual. Um, some people, depending on what their lifestyle is, um, once a week, that might be what they would do. A lot of our clients come once a month, every six weeks, just to do one to refresh their bodies and to use it as health maintenance. Um, we've had um, flight 
attendants that do long haul flying, they come and do a session when they come back from doing a long haul flight because it's very hydrating for their bodies. So it really comes back to your lifestyle, your health um, needs, and the pole and therapist designing that and, and guiding you um, what's going to be right for you. Okay, so everybody watching, if you've got any questions, please pop them in because we've got about 10 minutes um, to go. So the next question is, is a salt flush a good thing to do? Um, so I, I personally feel that flushing from the top is a bit traumatic. Like you said before, um, um, Carly, about you don't want to traumatise the upper part of the digestive system and mess with the microbiome. Um, so personally, I feel anything we do, do it from the bottom end um, and activate and support the body. Um, we are seeding and feeding from the top end. Um, you can add to Depending that. Depending like a salt enema. Is that what the question was? Do you well, think they mean like salt flushing? Salt orally. Jenny, can you just let us know by what end you want the salt to go in. Yeah, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> just check it. Um, Susie said, thank you so much, Carly. That's awesome. Cool. Um, Gabrielle, I agree with the parasite question. I have been told parasites are normal. Can Carly state bad bacteria? Um, can Carly state bad bacteria so can request these from my GP? Um, Okay. Oh, that there's okay. So when you're looking at uh, microbiome testing, um, the the labs in Australia, anything that is um, above zero point zero five percent, we're getting technical here, but the the question's getting into technical land. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go there. Um, there's anything over zero point zero five will be detected. So if you have a parasite or an organism. Um, that is above those levels, uh, you know, and you're going through and getting a stool sample through the, the company, uh, it will come up. So if your results have come back and there are no parasites, um, it's highly likely that they aren't there. But when you're looking at comprehensive microbiome testing, we it's not just about the parasites. We want to look at the full picture of everything. You know, um, what are the beneficial bacteria? Um, you've got different um, uh, different bad bacteria, worms, parasites, viral things that can happen in the bowel as well. So you want to kind of get a snapshot of all of it. For me to sit here and list uh, uh, all of the ones for you to go to your GP, um, it's impossible because you would actually, you're better off doing a complete microbiome test um, and you're often not going to get that through your GP anyway. They will do like tests for blood and they'll also do like a fecal PCR testing. Um, but for more of the functional gut, gut work you really want to kind of work with a naturopath there um, and they'll, they'll they'll get the full report um, the one that i use basically with the sample um, that you send away it'll come back with a report of every single thing that is currently in your bowel as a list mm -hmm. and then we go through that and we analyze whether they're high low you know whether they're pathogenic non-pathogenic and then we kind of start to work out an individualized plan from there but yeah so once you've been on antibiotics how long does that take to build your good bacteria back up in your gut? The, the, the most recent research says that one round of antibiotics can take one year to, to, for your gut to fully repair and um, regenerate from that. So they're, they're pretty, they're very strong. They're having big effects. So, and, you know, I've had clients who've had multiple rounds of antibiotics in a very short amount of time. And, you know, disclaimer here, antibiotics are needed. They save lives in many different cases. So I'm not by any man saying never take an antibiotic again in your life. But, you know, we need to have some awareness about the greater effect that these antibiotics are having on our